Madagascar is a unique island, which having been cut off from the rest of the world for millions of years, many unique animals, many of which being found nowhere else have evolved in this unique environment, and is widely considered to be one of the most biodiverse regions on the planet. Madagascar has actually been separated from the rest of the world for around 88 million years, after splitting from the Indian subcontinent, and as such, the fauna that evolved in the Mesozoic was just as diverse and unique in terms of its fauna. In a Maastrichtian Madagascar, one of these animals was Majungasaurus, a genus of Abelosaurid that with its short legs and singular horn, was one of the most bizarre of all dinosaurs. The first remains that likely belongs to Majungasaurus were described from northwestern Madagascar in 1896 by French paleontologist Charles de Perret, which included two teeth, a claw, and some vertebrae. These were referred to as belonging to the genus Megalosaurus, which at the time was a large wastebasket taxon containing any number of unrelated large theropods, and as such was named Megalosaurus crenatissimus, derived from the Latin words crenatus, meaning notched, and suffix isimus, meaning most, in reference to the numerous serrations on both the front and rear edges of the teeth. Numerous more fragments would be discovered by French collectors over the next 100 years, when in 1955, René Lavocat, another French paleontologist, described a theropod dentary with teeth from the same region where the original material was found. The teeth were a match for those described by Diperet, but the strongly curved jawbone was very different from that of Megalosaurus and Dryptosaurus, another genus which the original bones were assigned to. Based on this unique dentary, Lavocat described the genus Majungasaurus, using an older spelling of Mahajanga, a city in Madagascar, near where the first fossils were found. A few years later, in 1979, a dome-shaped skull fragment was also found in Madagascar, which was referred to as a new genus of Pachycephalosaur, which was accordingly named Majungatholus atopus, and was thought to be the first report of a Pachycephalosaurid in the Southern Hemisphere. Further fieldwork in 1996, however, revealed a spectacularly complete theropod skull that also possessed the same dome-shaped swelling nearly identical to the one described as Majungatholus. Majungatholus was thus reclassified as an abelosaurid in 1998, and comparisons were quickly made to Majungasaurus, bringing up a question of whether or not they were one in the same. The type dentary of Majungasaurus was at first deemed to be too fragmentary to confidently assign as the same species as the skull, Further fieldwork over the next decade revealed more and more partial skeletons and other skull material, which ranged from juveniles to adults, revealing a much more complete picture of Majungasaurus. Taken together, these remains represent nearly all of the bones in the skeleton, with this fieldwork culminating in a 2007 monograph consisting of seven scientific papers focusing on all aspects of the animal's biology that confirmed the jaw's characteristic of the species. Therefore, due to Majungasaurus being the senior synonym, Majungatholus was rendered a junior synonym, and Majungasaurus was deemed as valid. Majungasaurus is classified as a member of the theropod clade Abelosauridae, which with their tall skulls, blunt snouts, extensive sculpturing of the facial bones, atrophied limbs and stocky hind limbs, all of which Majungasaurus possessed, was a part of a remarkable group of unique and peculiar animals. As with many dinosaur families, the evolutionary relationships within Abelosauridae are confused. Several cladistic studies have indicated a close relationship with Carnotaurus found in South America, while others were unable to firmly place it in the phylogeny. The most recent analysis instead places Majungasaurus in a separate subfamily in Abelosauridae, that being Majungasaurinae, being placed in the clade alongside other related animals like Indosaurus and Rajasaurus from India, which is separate from South America and African genera, which leaves open the possibility of separate clades of abelosaurids in western and eastern Gondwana. Majungasaurus was medium-sized for a theropod, measuring around 5 to 7 meters in length and weighing around 1,100 kilograms. The skull of Majungasaurus is exceptionally well known compared to most theropods, and even among abelosaurs is notable, as while it also shares the same characteristic short, deep skull, it also possessed a single small horn that rose from the top of the skull above the eyes, and it was this characteristic that was the catalyst for the misidentification of the animal as a pachycephalosaur. The spike has been found to be made from porous material, which indicates that it was almost certainly just for show, and was too fragile for combat. Like other abelosaurids, Majungasaurus had a rough, sculptured texture on the outside of the skull bones, 
which on the nasal bones were extremely thick and fused together, which in life would have been covered in some form of integument, likely keratin, which would have assisted in potential fights with other Majungasaurus. Due to being known from relatively complete remains from many individuals, the postcranial skeleton of Majungasaurus is well understood, and generally resembles other abelosaurids with a few differences. The hind limbs are notably stocky and short compared to the body length, and with their long bodies and tails, have garnered a rather humorous reputation for looking like an animal version of a sausage. They also possessed a prominent crest on the knees, known as a synaminal crest, which would have meant that the calf muscles would have been larger than in most theropods, which combined with their shorter legs would have increased Majungasaurus's force-producing capability, giving Majungasaurus's excellent initial acceleration, indicating that the genus was very likely an ambush predator, getting close enough to unsuspecting prey before charging out at a rapid pace to swiftly subdue and kill their target. Scientists have also been able to reconstruct the respiratory system of Majungasaurus based on superbly preserved series of vertebrae, which contain cavities that may have resulted from the infiltration of avian cell lungs and air sacs. In the birds, the neck vertebrae and ribs are hollowed out by the cervical air sac, the upper back vertebrae by the lung, and the lower back and sacral vertebrae by the abdominal air sac. Similar features in Majungasaurus vertebrae imply the presence of these air sacs, and they may have allowed for a basic form of avian style flow through ventilation, where air flow through the lungs is one way, so that oxygen-rich air inhaled from outside the body is never mixed with exhaled air laden with carbon dioxide. This method of respiration, while complicated, is highly efficient, and therefore would have assisted Majungasaurus greatly in a pursuing prey. This also has a big implication to the evolution of these dinosaurs, as the split between the Ceratosaur line, which led to Majungasaurus, and the Tetanuran line, which includes modern birds, occurred very early in the history of theropods. The avian respiratory system present in both of these lines must have therefore originated before the split, well before the evolution of birds themselves in the late Triassic. Computer tomography has also allowed for a rough reconstruction of the brain and inner ear structure to be visualised. The brain, as like many dinosaurs, was small relative to the body size, but otherwise similar to many non-coelosaurian theropods. One difference between Majungasaurus and other theropods was that they possessed a smaller flocculus, a region of the cerebellum that helps to coordinate movements of the eye with movements of the head. This suggests that Majungasaurus did not rely on quick head movements to sight and capture prey, which indicates that Majungasaurus, when attacking prey or other Majungasaurus in territorial disputes, they would have been relatively straightforward attackers, charging in and locking down with their powerful jaws. As mentioned earlier, the markedly wide jaws of Majungasaurus also has some implications for how they would have dispatched their prey. The largest known herbivore existing alongside Majungasaurus was the Titanosaur Rapatosaurus, a sauropod that at a fairly modest 15 metres would have been sufficient prey for the theropod. From known Rapatosaurus fossils, tooth marks have been found that match the dentition of Majungasaurus, indicating that they would have fed on them. Scientists have suggested that the unique skull shape of Majungasaurus and other abelosaurids indicates different predatory habits than other theropods, in that while the many are characterised by long, low skulls of narrow width, abelosaurid skulls are noticeably taller, wider, and shorter. The narrow skulls of other theropods were well equipped to withstand the vertical stress of a powerful bite, but not as good at withstanding torsion. For a modern comparison, theropods like Tyrannosaurids and Allosaurids may have been most comparable to that of long-snouted canids, utilising many bites to weaken their targets, and then finishing them off once they were weak enough. On the contrary, Abelosaurids, especially Majungasaurus, were instead adapted for a feeding strategy most similar to modern felids, which bite once and hold on until the prey is subdued. Majungasaurus, even for an abelosaurid, had an exceptionally broad snout, and this is further evidence to support this method of hunting. The neck was also strengthened accordingly, and was robust, possessing exaggerated muscle attachment sites and ribs that were interlocked. These muscles would have been able to hold the head steady, even with a struggling prey item in their jaws. The lower jaw also possesses synovial joints between certain bones that would have allowed for a high degree of flexibility in the lower jaw, similar to what is seen in snakes, although not to the extent that they could swallow prey much larger than themselves. 
This instead may have been an adaptation to prevent the fracture of the lower jaw when holding on to their prey, with their jaw being able to flex to whatever angle and direction the prey moves in while being held in place. Examination of the teeth of Majungasaurus also revealed that the theropods was unparalleled in teeth replication, as they were able to replace them anywhere from 2 to 13 times faster than other theropods, able to replace the entire set of formidable teeth within a span of two months. All of this supports that Majungasaurus and perhaps Abelosaurids were specialist sauropod hunters. The powerful short jaws and robust necks meant that once locked on, the sauropod's ability to remove them was significantly compromised, even though they themselves were tremendously powerful. The short, stocky hind limbs meant that they would have been able to quickly get in close to their targets after getting close through an ambush, and once latched on, would have lowered the animal's centre of gravity keeping them low to the ground to hold on effectively to their prey item through additional stability, as well as being able to eventually pull them down to their level. The most interesting aspect in terms of behaviour that has been revealed about these animals is that they were on occasion cannibalistic, as numerous bones of Majungasaurus have been discovered bearing tooth marks, identical to those on sauropod bones from the same localities, both of which belonged to another Majungasaurus. Given that Majungasaurus is the only large theropod from the area, and that the marks have the same spacings as the teeth in Majungasaurus jaws, it is as of now the only known non-avian dinosaur confirmed to have cannibalistic tendencies. This however does not mean that Majungasaurus were actively killing their own kind on a routine basis, as many modern animals that practice cannibalism do so either when they are starving, feel the need to eliminate rivals, or scavenging from remains of an already deceased animal. Cannibalism is in fact incredibly common in animals, and thousands of species have been known to practice it, from fish, insects, lizards, close relatives like crocodiles, and even primates and birds, the latter of which are actually dinosaurs like Majungasaurus. Majungasaurus, with their reinforced skulls and rigid necks and ribs, may have also engaged in shoving matches, either for breeding rights or territory based on their anatomy. No wounds have yet been found on the skulls of Abelosaurids, indicating that form of intraspecific combat was absent, in contrast to Tyrannosaurids where gruesome facial bites were quite common. One specimen of Majungasaurus possessed a toe bone that had been broken and later healed, and while it is very hard to know how exactly this occurred, it could have been that another Majungasaurus in a shoving match stepped onto this animal's toe, and after the tussle, the animal, regardless of whether they lost or won, was able to heal. On the whole, Majungasaurus was undoubtedly one of the most bizarre and fascinating non-avian dinosaurs, and I hope that with this video you have gained a greater understanding for both this remarkable animal and the world that they lived in. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.